Welcome back, Brooklyn Nets fans. So today we're going to talk about the second half. How can the Nets get out of the playing tournament? How will Goran Dragic help the Nets who they recently just signed? All that type of stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Leave a like, always helps out, and let's get into it. So for the second year in a row, the Brooklyn Nets are able to acquire someone from the buyout market who comes from the San Antonio Spurs. Last year, of course, it was LaMarcus Aldridge. He didn't last long because of the heart issue. Now he's back, of course, but they get Goran Dragic in the 2021-2022 season. And it's a move that's going to help this team because they definitely needed a ball handler. We know that. Like, when Kyrie Irving can't play home games, the Nets don't have a natural point guard. Asking Seth Curry and asking Patty Mills to be your point guards full-time, and even James Johnson, is not an ideal situation. So the, the Nets really needed somebody to just bring up the ball, be a veteran presence, and just be available. And that's what Goran Dragic can be for this team. Now, Dragic has not played much this year. Only played five games with the Raptors. He was pretty much benched early on this year. Then he was taking a personal leave, got ready for his next team, got traded to the Spurs in the Thaddeus Young deal, and then he was bought out. So now he's here with Brooklyn. Apparently, Sean Marks admitted that Steve Nash had a lot to do with this move. Of course, Steve Nash and Goran Dragic were teammates back in like 2009, 2010 when they played with the Phoenix Suns. So thank you, Steve Nash, for helping us acquire this guy. I think he's a big part of it. And here's like the realistic expectations for a guy like Dragic at this point in his career, 35 years old, has not played much this year. Last season, he had 13 points per game. He had an effective field goal percentage of 51, three-point percentage of 37. So... He wasn't that bad offensively, and I, I do think Dragic will have a decent role on this team. He might play 20 to 25 minutes a night, especially when Kyrie Irving is out with these you know, home games and whatnot. So Dragic's going to help this team in a way offensively, but defensively is your problem. We know Dragic's not the best defender. He'll give you effort, but a lot of times he gets beat off the dribble. Doesn't contest shots, of course, because of his size and all that. So yeah, Dragic has an issue in some areas defensively. But offensively, he can be the ball handler, can work the pick and roll, can knock down the mid-range shots, can finish with the left hand at the basket. He can make three-point shots when he's open. So you're getting some help there. And the Nets definitely needed somebody like that because, once again, you don't want Seth Curry and Patty Mills playing out of their natural positions. Let them be catch-and-shoot guys. Don't have them handle the ball majority of the time. And hopefully... If these mandates are lifted in New York City, we get to see uh, Goran Dragic come off the bench behind Kyrie Irving and be the bench point guard. So that would be the ideal situation. But as of right now, when Kyrie cannot play home games in Brooklyn, you would think that Goran Dragic may in fact be the starting point guard for the Brooklyn Nets. So after the Nets brought in Dragic, the corresponding move was to cut somebody and they decided to cut Javon Carter, who apparently went to Milwaukee today. So good for him. But Javon Carter, I mean, I've talked about him in the last video with the grades video. Was a bit of a disappointment. I think as Nets fans, we expected more. We were hoping for more of an offensive output. We were hoping for more defensively too. It just never really came to fruition with Javon Carter. He had his moments here. He had a nice stretch here the past couple of weeks, but as a whole for the entire season was catching a lot of coaches, DMPs and all that type of stuff. So Javon Carter was a bit of a disappointment here, but it is what it is. So anyway, looking at the Nets roster now and pretty much who they have on this team going forward, who's going to be there for the playoffs, the rotations and all that type of stuff. We'll start the point guard position. Now, hopefully I'm in this like fantasy world of like the vaccine mandate will be lifted by April and hopefully Kyrie will be back. So we have a starting lineup potentially of Kyrie Irving, Seth Curry, Kevin Durant, Ben Simmons, Andre Drummond. It may, it may not be exactly that lineup, but just work with me here. This might be like, you know, possibly what it could be. So a very good starting lineup. And you have depth of the second unit of Drogic, Patty Mills, Cam Thomas, Blake Griffin, and LaMarcus Aldridge. Very good second unit. Then you have some other guys worked in there. Joe Harris, maybe, if he comes back. We'll find out about that one, hopefully, in the coming days. James Johnson, the Nets still want to use him, maybe. Bruce Brown has been playing pretty well lately. And then Nicholas Claxton. And I don't know what Nicholas Claxton's uh, role on this basketball team is going forward, but... He may be a guy who, when the playoffs come around in a certain matchup, they may want to use him. He's a guy that can contest shots at the rim, can you know work the pick and roll game, finish alley oops, and 
you know, be a good uh, on-ball defender. So Nick Claxton in some situations may be used. I don't expect him to play a ton, but just keep that in mind. And the Nets, of course, still have Dayron Sharp, still have Kessler Edwards on the bench, but I don't really expect those guys to have much of a role when the playoffs come around based on the depth they have, assuming they will be healthy. Now, as I said in the past, if Joe Harris does not return, I can see a world where Kessler Edwards gets some minutes in the playoffs. Not a lot, but I could see a world where he gets some runs. So... That really depends on the health of Joe Harris. Now, right now, looking at the standings, the Nets are in the eighth seed, of course, uh, behind Toronto, and the Celtics have the sixth seed. The Nets actually play the Celtics twice in the next five or six games here, so they will get a crack at getting that sixth seed. And there's 23 games remaining, two and a half back of the Celtics. Now, if you're the Nets, you just want to get out of the play-in tournament. So if you are in the seventh or eighth seed, you get to have at least two chances to move on. So if the Nets lose the first game, they can win the second game. If you're in that ninth or 10th spot, you're in a position where if you lose one game, your season's over. So the Nets, of course, cannot be in the nine or 10th spot. Seven or eight, you can live with it, not what you want, but the Nets wanna get a top six seed for sure. And hopefully they can do that. 23 games is a lot of time. You would assume Kevin Durant, Ben Simmons will be back by that point. So maybe not right away against the Celtics on Thursday, but at some point pretty soon, we're hoping for that. So the Nets' next six games are pretty tough. It's the Celtics at home. I'm going to that game, actually. Very excited for that. Hopefully, I see Ben Simmons make his debut, but I doubt it. Um, They're at the Bucks, the second game. They're home versus the Raptors, at the Raptors after that, home versus the Heat, then at the Celtics. So some very tough Eastern Conference matchups. But if the Nets can go like 4-2, maybe even 5-1, and one, they can make up so much ground and gain on these teams if they were able to do that. Now, if the opposite happens, where the Nets go 2-4, and 1-5 and five out of the break, that's a situation where it's very worrisome because you may drop to that 9 or 10 spot and be in that one-game elimination when the playoffs do come around. So the Nets, of course, have to focus and just hopefully get healthy. That's the number one thing. I do believe the Nets can beat these teams if they're healthy, of course, but that's the biggest question right now. But... Looking at the rest of the Nets' schedule, I just mentioned how their first six games out of the break are tough, but listen to their last eight games here. So they have tough ones. You know, they play the Grizzlies on the road, then they're at the Heat. But after that, the final eight games, home versus the Hornets, home versus the Pistons, home versus the Bucks, which is by far the toughest matchup, at the Hawks, home versus the Rockets, at the Knicks, Home versus the Cavaliers. That's a tough one, too. I forgot to mention that one. Then you have home versus the Pacers. So we're talking like six out of eight of those games are very winnable. And hopefully they can take at least one of the Cavaliers or Bucks games. So if the Nets can close out the season at 6-2, and 7-1, and one, that may be the run they need to get themselves in a much better playoff position. And they would carry more momentum going right into the playoffs. Playing an easier schedule, getting those easier wins will give this team momentum when the season really starts to matter in mid-April when the playoffs begin. So as you can see with the Pooch tweet down low, I mean, the Nets have added Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, and Goran Dragic, and they lost James Harden, Paul Mills, Sav, Javon Carter. Your main loss there, of course, is James Harden. But James Harden had one foot in, one foot out, and the locker room was kind of effed up because of that. So um, I think the Nets, though, from a talent uh, standpoint, have got better. I mean, you look at Ben Simmons, who I would say, you know, when he's right, can be a top 40, top 30 player in the NBA. You have Seth Curry, who's one of the better role players in the NBA. You have Andre Drummond, one of the better rebounders in the NBA. And then, of course, Goran Dragic, who's your veteran ball handler point guard, can give you hopefully a solid 20 minutes a night. So that compared to just James Harden, I think Sean Marks actually did a pretty good job this trade deadline, especially for the hand he was dealt. You know, not having Kevin Durant healthy, the stuff with Kyrie Irving going on, all the injuries, Joe Harris. I think Sean Marks did a really good job, and he got a lot from Philly. Let's not forget about the two first-round picks in the future as well. So getting two first-round picks from Philly, plus getting what he got from James Harden, has set this Nets team up for having depth in the playoffs. And think back to just a year ago, not even a year ago, back to the summer when they played the Milwaukee Bucks. What killed the Nets last year? What ruined their season? Injuries, right? If the Nets sustain injuries, now look, if Kevin Durant goes down, yeah, the season's over. But if the Nets lost somebody like a Joe Harris once again, let's say Joe Harris re-injures himself in the playoffs, and let's say LaMarcus Aldridge has an injury as well, the Nets won't be completely screwed because now they at least would have more depth on this team as compared to last year. Last year when Kyrie and James Harden went out, it was like, all right, well, we got KD and 
some other guys. You know, we have Jeff Green, we have Blake Griffin, but outside of that, we've got nobody. Joe Harris is shooting 20% from three. It ain't going well. So at least now the Nets have other guys that can rely on if they were to sustain injuries in the playoffs. And that's something you have to be prepared for. I think Sean Marks had the idea last year that at least two of his three big three would make it through the playoffs healthy. That unfortunately did not happen last year, but now the Nets are more set up to have at least get they put themselves in a better position to at least if they sustain injuries to be prepared for that so you know once again if a guy like Durant goes out you can't prepare for that there's no replacing that of course but assuming they might lose some guys in the rotation you at least have the depth to make up for it so that's the good part about this team and I think Sean Marks did a pretty good job for the uh, hand he was dealt once again so that'll pretty much do it for the video I'm excited for the second half I'm excited to go to the game Thursday hopefully they get a dub there my brother's a Celtics fan so I do want to beat them of course but anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys next time next time.